in this session let us see how the mems devices are fabricated that is mems fabrication uh, the mems fabrication involves three steps before i go to the details of mems fabrication i would like to show you something different uh, you know this is an x-ray sheet x-ray sheet you're seeing this you know how the x-ray sheet the x-ray process is initially there will be a surface like this like a plastic surface on the plastic surface there will be a coating typically black in color now when you go to the hospital to take an x-ray this sheet uh, with having the coating will be kept inside some uh, chamber some some box and if your hand is to be taken for your x-ray then what happens is they will keep this particular sheet along with the uh, the box on a surface and you will be asked to keep your hand over the surface like this now from the top the x-ray will be given that means that sheet here will be exposed to x-ray through your hand so you when you get the x-ray after washing and all you know that there is a process of washing right after washing you can see that wherever there are bones and all the material that is a black deposit will be removed and wherever uh, the x-ray passed there the material will be retained so in the x-ray making process if you globally see there are three steps involved one is on a substrate substrate means this kind of polymer surface or any su surface on which the deposit or coating is given is called as a substrate on the substrate there is a coating the coating has got a feature that is that has got some uh, relation with the x-ray that is the coating can have reaction with x-ray that's a feature now the surface along with the coating is taken uh, placed beneath the x-ray projector a gun then you keep your finger or your, your arm or whatever to take the x-ray so when this arm and this sheet are exposed to x-ray through certain regions the x-ray will be passing through certain regions x-ray will not be passed so what happens is on that sheet on certain regions x-ray will be falling on certain regions x-ray will not be falling now what happened is the x-ray film uh, sorry the x-ray is passed to the surface though there is nothing visible or visibly visible change you see on the surface but there's some kind of uh, reaction happen on the surface of the substrate now this particular sheet along with this is taken to a dark room then they do the washing during washing wherever the uh, the uh, x-ray were exposed those region will be retained and wherever there are no x-ray fell on the surface those will be removed in washing so the three processes are getting a substrate having a coating second process is keeping a kind of a pa pattern a kind of shape on the on the surface and exposing it to x-ray and the third process is washing the sheet so that exposed region will be uh, uh, retained and unexposed region will be removed so in this x-ray sheet after you get it you now from the doctor have you see see can you see any 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 change on the surface you know you you don't see any change on the surface see, it appears almost flat you don't see any change at all on the surface but when you look like this you know that through certain regions the light passes through certain region light does not pass that means there is no material on the transparent region there is material on the opaque region so this means that there is material on the surface but you are unable to detect so if you take a cross section you can see that there is material some somewhere 
and the material has got certain thickness. That thickness is of micron range. So initially the deposit was on micron level coating, maybe some 10 to 100 micron meter coating. And after removal, those some coating I have gone and some coating is remained. And the coating remained is having a thickness approximately 10 to 15 or 20 microns. This is the scale of MEMS. And this is the method followed in MEMS fabrication also. I have told this, uh, the X-ray uh, production process uh, or making this X-ray sheet, it is much similar to our MEMS fabrication process in connection with what we have seen with the X-ray film production. I would like to link MEMS fabrication with that. In MEMS fabrication also, there are three steps involved and the three steps will be happening in a sequence. And the sequence is the first step is deposition. That means developing a layer of material on some substrate. Substrate means a base substance. Lithography is the second process and the meaning is transfer of a pattern. In X-ray production, we have kept a pattern. The pattern is similar to that of our hand. So when it is exposed to that ray, that pattern is transferred to the base, though it is not visibly changed, right? But there is a pattern transfer happened. Now, what was the pattern transfer happened? To know that, we have to take the film for next process called as micro-machining. Micro-machining means the removal of material selectively in a controlled fashion. Machining means the removal of material in a controlled fashion for the requirement. And micro-machining is removal of material in the micron range in a controlled fashion. So all these processes we have seen in X-ray production also, these kind of three steps are involved in MEMS fabrication as well. Now let us see the three processes in MEMS fabrication step by step. First process let us take, it is deposition. Deposition means depositing some layer on a substrate. Let us categorize the deposition processes into two groups. One is a chemical methods of deposition, another one is physical methods of deposition. Examples of chemical methods of deposition are chemical vapor deposition, electro deposition, thermal oxidation, etc. There are many other more forms also. Chemical means means the chemical reaction happens between something so that a deposit will be formed on a substrate. Chemical vapor deposition or chemical means these processes exploit the creation of a solid material that is a sub, the substrate, the coating, directly from chemical reaction in gas or liquid compositions or with substrate material. So the chemical reaction can be between some gases, it can be some liquid and gas, it can be between liquid, or it can be the reaction of some, the gas with the substrate itself. So there is a chemical reaction and the reaction becomes the reason for developing a deposit on a surface. That is called as chemical means of deposition. Now physical means of deposition, obviously there is no chemical reaction happens. The deposition is happening on the substrate by transferring the substrate or the material on a substrate. Examples of physical methods of deposition are physical vapor deposition and casting. Physical vapor deposition, in fact, when you hear the term chemical vapor deposition and physical vapor deposition, Please understand that chemical vapor deposition, actually it is a group of processes. There are many processes where vapor of something is deposited and the vapor is formed by chemical reaction. Physical vapor deposition are again a set of uh, deposition processes where a vapor of something is formed and the vapor is formed by some physical uh, means. There is no chemical reaction involved. So that set of processes are called as physical vapor deposition. Now let me see what is physical means. Common features of these processes are that the material deposited is 
physically moved onto a substrate. In other words, there is no chemical reaction that forms any material on the substrate. Let us see a few examples of chemical means and physical means in this session. BEMS fabrication deposition. This is the first step. Now let us see chemical methods of deposition, chemical vapor deposition. I am telling only a few examples. There are many other methods also. You are strongly advised to refer the uh, reference articles to go uh, get details more about these explanations. Now chemical vapor deposition methods. One example that I have shown here it is LPCVD. LP stands for low pressure, CVD stands for chemical vapor deposition. Reactor means any place, it's a controlled environment where the reaction happens. So the deposition happens inside LPCVD. That is the example that is shown in this case. Now the LPCVD reactor consists of a chamber. This is a reactor. It's a controlled zone where the pressure will be removed. That is, it is evacuated. So and there will be very controlled pressure. So we call it as a low pressure chamber. So there should be a vacuum pump to remove it. Okay. Now inside the chamber, there will be uh, provisions to keep the wafers. Wafers are the substrates on which we have to deposit the material. Now the material to be deposited will be generated by chemical reaction because it's a chemical vapor deposition method. To enable the chemical reaction, you had to supply two gases into the chamber under a particular temperature and the control pressure. At that condition, that gases will react to form certain deposits or the, uh, the, uh, form certain material. And the result of the material will be deposited on the substrate. The wafers are kept on the substrate. And that's how the deposit will be generated on the substrate. Let us see another example of chemical vapor deposition. It is electro deposition. Electro deposition, we can call actually it is as electroplating. It's a familiar for us. Electroplating is also a kind of deposition. Since our core or key word is deposition, we are not using the word electroplating. Instead, we use the word electro deposition because we are interested to deposit something on the wafer surface. So the arrangement is similar to electroplating here. Uh, there will be a container, there will be electrolyte solution, and there will be anode and there will be cathode. Here, this is anode, uh, there's a material that will be deposited and wafer, this is the su substrate on which the material to be deposited. Now, when it is subjected to an electrical supply, what happens is the material from this control elector will be uh, deposited on the cathode, this surface, wafer surface. So this is the method by which that substrate will be coated with a material to be deposited. Obviously, whatever be the material to be deposited will be kept as the control ele counter electrode in this case. We can coat even copper, gold, nickel, etc. on the wafer surface by means of this method. When I speak about electroplating, I'm very much interested to tell you another technology called as electroless plating. In electroplating, there is electric current that is enabling the deposition process. Whereas in electroless plating, there is no current that is given. Instead, the plating is happening because of some chemical reaction happening between some liquid, okay, in a controlled environment such as temperature. Electroplating, and electroless plating. The deposition is best controlled when used with an external electrical potential. So electroplating can be controlled with the electropotential. Electroless plating is controlled by the reaction. The control on the electroless plating is less compared to the electroplating method. I repeat. Thermal oxidation. Thermal oxidation, as the name indicates, it's an oxidation process that will develop a coating on the substrate. Here the substrates are wafers. The arrangement is seen in this diagram. So this also happens inside a chamber. The chamber is a controlled environment where initially the air will be 
the entire air, air will be evacuated. And after that, after placing the wafers to be coated, this chamber will be subjected to a supply of rich air, uh, rich oxygen environment. Now, in this environment, it will be heated up. At a high temperature, the surface of the wafers becomes oxidized so that the material of the wafer itself will be oxidized and the oxide coating of the material will be generated on the surface under high temperature. So thermal oxidation, the temperature of the substrate surface is raised to around 800 to 1100 degrees Celsius in an oxygen rich atmosphere to form oxides of the same material as a coating. The property is that only oxidizable materials can be used or can be deposit uh, can be used for developing the deposit in this process. We will see this physical vapor deposition and the techniques and the further fabrication methods in the next class.